The first one is the, the shift to mobile and indeed wearable technologies, massive change. Virtually 18% of internet usage is now via mobile phones and look, we're on them all the time, checking on the internet, checking in on for hotels, for whatever, restaurants, whatever it might be. So that's the first big change. Um, the second is what we describe as personalization. We all expect things to be done for us and companies, brands are, are using that. So just as an example, you can now go to a billboard in some countries in the world and actually the billboard looks at you and works out whether you are a man or a woman, uh, what age you are, and gives you a different message depending uh, on that. The third is the whole uh, spread of social media. Uh, opportunities for companies and brands firstly to really target their messages to dif different segment groups in a very cost-effective way in a way that they couldn't in the past before uh, before the internet but there's also a challenge for companies and brands as well in that there are constant conversations uh, on social media did you have a good experience with that airline was your meal poor at this restaurant etc uh, etc et and companies need to recognize that it isn't just a case of, as in the past, sending out a press release or sending out a message via social media. You've really got to have a conversation and a dialogue. And so for companies, if they are just going to go onto social media, whether it be Twitter or Facebook, and just send out uh, messages one way, uh, they really shouldn't bother. They should only engage if they really are prepared to have uh, a discussion. So let me give you, an, give you an anecdote. I was in Ireland, in, in Dublin at the time of the British Queen's uh, Jubilee. And Starbucks decided to send out uh, a tweet to all their followers in the UK and Ireland. And it was, uh, aren't you proud to be British today? Well, obviously, uh, if you were Irish, you were certainly not proud to be British that day. So they sent that tweet out to all their followers. And it took them hours and hours and hours to respond. And of course, the Irish were getting more and more upset. Uh, and whereas if it had been a conversation and if they had realized the mistake and after like three or four minutes they would uh, sent out a light-hearted tweet saying look we've been in Ireland since X we're proud to be Irish too it would have it would have been a conversation and immediately it would have taken out the sort of heat of the conversation trend number four is brand journalism uh, brands now really create news and I think a very good example of that is is Red Bull uh, and the Felix uh, space jump uh, they built a whole story around uh, the brand. Uh, there was videos, there was websites, there were infographics, there were facts. They, they created a, a, a documentary at the end. There was worldwide interest in that uh, story. Uh, it was an image that I know, most people around the world would recognize. That's a real difference to the old press releases that companies used to send out uh, in the past. Trend number five is crisis always on. With the internet, a story is around the world in seconds and you have to respond. Uh, you may not be able to give uh, a lot of information immediately. The worst thing is to give the wrong factual information, but you need to respond and you need to be ready to respond. And you need to have different rules of approval to ensure that you can respond much more quickly than you did uh, in the past. Trend number six, transparency is king. Companies used to do everything possible to avoid giving information. In today's world uh, of social media, it just isn't possible. People want to know what the environmental policy of a, a company is and what's actually happening in practice. Greenwashing doesn't work. They want to know the salary of the CEO. Uh, and the companies that are, that are going to be successful are the ones that are transparent about the way they operate uh, and what their vision uh, and goals are. Uh, Evidence-based communications is the seventh trend. I think one of the challenges for our industry has always been uh, what is the value, what is the real value, what is the real delivery towards the business result that we have, have done, uh, not just as agencies but also for communications departments within companies. With evidence-based communications we measure right at the start and throughout the program and at the end the impact of our work. So we, we do research with uh, consumers or doctors or politicians or whoever it is we're trying to influence and we track how their behavior is changing, how their perceptions are changing throughout the program so that we can actually show the impact of the work that we've done. Uh, trend number eight is image is all. Uh, most of us went into this profession because we love writing and therefore you know, we love writing press releases. Today a single photograph, a single image, a short witty film has so much power, uh, so much more power uh, than uh, that boring two-page two uh, press release. Uh, 
Number nine, the power of purpose. Uh, in the 1970s and 80s, you had the, the move towards CSR, corporate social responsibility. In the 90s and 2000s, uh, people began to realize that you know, doing a little bit of charity uh, because you were polluting a river didn't really change uh, what was needed. And therefore, companies started talking about corporate responsibility and taking responsible decisions. Uh, now companies are beginning to look at corporate purpose, which is really a decision-making process within the organization. Uh, based on the values of, of, of that organization. And once you've got that values, that purpose for the company, then using uh, and taking that as a way to motivate employees to communicate internally and as a way of communicating externally uh, is the future for successful companies. And then finally, uh, integrated communications. Uh, Burst Mostella was uh, founded in 1953, probably the first truly integrated communications company. Uh, Harold Burson was the PR guy, uh, and uh, Bill Marstello was the advertising man, uh, and they built an integrated agency. In today's world, companies have broken down the barriers between the marketing team and the communications team, and agencies have done the same, and we, as part of WPP, really uh, and I focus on horizontality. How can we work with all the different companies within the different uh, WPP uh, group companies to offer PR, advertising, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. Uh, and in the, in the in the digital world, you can't just do PR and you can't just do advertising.